we will be discussing the mystery of the ancient Egyptian Sphinx, who built it, and why it was built. We will be covering the esoteric and the exoteric meaning of the ancient monument, relative to alchemical and astronomical studies. What is the relation between the celestial objects, the positioning of the ancient Egyptian Sphinx, and the pyramids? And why did the shadow play an important role in its creation? Were the ancient Egyptians trying to create an architectural illusionism? All that and much more will be uncovered on episode 5 of Mystify. Let's dive deep into the mystery hole. Before I start, don't forget to like, share and subscribe as it does help me create more content for you. Also, I want to give special thanks to all the new subscribers who joined my channel and thanks to all the Patreons and supporters who are donating for the channel to keep the research and content creation alive. If you ever decide to support me and be part of the work, you can simply do that by donating in the links found in the description box. And now I would like to thank everyone for joining Mystifiles, a podcast dedicated for in-depth investigations and studies about ancient and modern esoteric mysteries. As you can see, we have uncovered too many mysteries from ancient pyramids to the obelisks and researched the mysterious secret lives of historical figures like Pythagoras, Euclid, Isaac Newton, and many more. I would recommend you to watch the previous episodes as it will help you to pick up on the current and future content. Our today's topic baffled humans till the modern day. From its bizarre figure and gigantic size, it just leaves a magical spell in the eye of the perceiver. The Sphinx, a monolithic gigantic statue of a lion's body and the head of a man, gazing at the deep horizons, waiting for the sun to rise and spread its rays on the lands of Kemet. The word Sphinx means the human-headed lion in ancient Greek. Others called it Abu al which means father of terror in Arabic. What makes this monument a huge mystery is the fact that the ancient Egyptians did not write down their history. Or maybe they did, but not in the traditional way that we are used to. The ancient Egyptian culture was based on symbolism, art, and alchemy and they were masters of their craft. There's a huge cloud of mystery above the modern man when studying ancient Egyptian monuments. And there are too many speculations when it comes to the Sphinx itself. That's why we started this episode today, to decode this magnificent and greatest Sphinx monument in the history of humanity. We will delve deep into the esoteric meaning behind it and why it was significant to the ancient Egyptians what kind of spiritual messages it tries to communicate to us, and how it relates to heavenly bodies in the sky. There have been thousands of Sphinx statues built all over the world. The most and oldest are in Egypt. The Greek civilization also admired the statue and built their own winged female version, which is the Sphinx of Naxos, now in the Archaeological Museum of Delphi which is a 2.22 meter tall marble statue of a sphinx, a mythical creature with the head of a woman, the chest and wings composed of impressive feathers of a prey bird turned upward, and the body of a lioness. It was erected next to the temple of Apollo in Delphi, the religious center of ancient Greece in 560 BCE. Moreover, in India, the conception of a sphinx that comes closest to the classic Greek idea is in the concept of the Sharabha, a mythical creature part lion, part man, and part bird. In modern days, especially at the rise of Romanticism and subsequent symbolism movements in the 19th century, the sphinx was carved by many secret societies in front of their temples like the Freemasons and the Rosicrucians and much more other Sphinx versions were spread. But we will discuss them in details in further episodes, as for this episode, our main focus will be the Ancient Egyptian Sphinx. The Ancient Egyptian Sphinx is the greatest of all. Surely, it was built by Egyptians. And I refuse to accept the idea that someone from space or lost continent built it, as it destroys the quality and value of the great Egyptian people and their intellect. However, if you have any theory about the Sphinx that does make sense, make sure to leave it in the command box. 
Till this day, it's not 100% accurately known whom is the face behind the ancient Egyptian Sphinx, but it's believed by many archaeologists that the face of the Sphinx belongs to the King Khafre, reigning in the period around 2500 BC, whom he also built his pyramid behind it, which is one of the three main pyramids of Giza. Some argue that it's the face of his father, King Khufu, the builder of the Great Pyramid. The reason behind it is because the face has more resemblance to Khufu relative to a very old and small statue of him that shows him without a beard, unlike his son Khafre, whom had a beard when depicted in a statue. I had too many questions already at this point, like what does the beard signify and when does the pharaoh grows it? What if the face resembled Khafre at a younger age? I discovered that in actuality, those pharaoh beards were fake, and they are worn by kings to symbolize their godhood and rule over the land of Kemet. Not only kings, but also queens used to wear it, like Queen Hatshepsut, whom she declared herself as a pharaoh, ruling as a man would for over 20 years and portraying herself in statues and paintings with a male body and false beard. So now we know that Khafre did not have to grow it as he can just wear it. And so that Egyptologist Giovanni Battista Caviglia, who excavated at Giza in 1817, which was then buried in sand up to the neck, he discovered beard fragments between the Sphinx pose buried under sand and found today in the British Museum. So this led the archaeologists to accept the fact that the statue truly resembled how Khafre is represented in his other statues. Also, I just wanted to add that the Egyptian archaeologist Salim Hassan finally freed the statue from the sand in the late 1930s, after Giovanni's team failed due to not being able to hold back the sand, which poured into their excavation pits nearly as fast as they would dig it. For many years, Khafre was buried in the shadows of the sand particles that recorded his ancient history and then he was brought back from the darkness into the light to proceed in guarding the horizons while Ra rides the sun as his barge rising from the underworld to bring the life of light into the lands of Kemet. In addition to the beard, there's a missing nose that till this day no one has found and no one knows exactly how it was destroyed. There are a number of speculations that account for what happened to the Sphinx's nose. The most popular one regarding the Sphinx's nose is that it was broken by cannonballs fired by Napoleon Bonaparte's army who were in Giza during one of the military battles of the French campaign in Egypt in 1798. However, a mid-18th century drawing of Sphinx by Danish naval captain and explorer Frederick Louis Norden depicts the statue without a nose. Since this predates Napoleon's army, it disproves that idea. Archaeologist Mark Lehner performed an archaeological study on the Sphinx and concluded that its nose was intentionally broken with instruments sometime between the 3rd and 10th century AD, but till this day no one is sure who have broken it. Now that we have uncovered part of the riddle, let's combine the human and animal part together to delve deeper into the meaning and esoteric symbolism of the Sphinx and uncover what kind of surreal image the ancient Egyptians were trying to draw in the space-time fabric. But before I go any further, if you do like this content and would like me to create more, please don't forget to do me a huge favor by liking, sharing and subscribing. Thank you so much. At this point of the podcast, I need you to have your minds pretty wide focused as this content will get really deep, as deep as the dark matter. The Sphinx has too many functions and meanings decoded in its symbolism. We can be 100% sure of what it truly means, but we can gather what we have of info and analyze. From the first sight, the Sphinx is sitting in a posture of a guardian animal, and its location is right beside the valley temple of Khafre. It's clearly guarding the temple and the pyramid of Khafre, yet there is much more meaning behind it. To get the bigger picture, we need to understand how ancient Egyptians think and in terms of what. 
The ancient Egyptians thought of the world as incomplete, and to complete it, it has to follow the order of the heavens in the sky. The pharaohs were very religious that tried their best to follow a spiritual self-disciplined life. They considered themselves above all average humans, and the reason behind that is not just the titles they have, but also their internal power to control their desires, to evolve their consciousness from the earthly desires represented by animalistic lime body of the Sphinx, and rise to the intellectual and spiritual inner realms of the self. This mysterious human ability to know God and the divine is what made us separate from merely being animals following our materialistic desires. The Sphinx facing the rising sun can symbolize the rising of the human soul from the darkness of ignorance and the earthly desires to the divine and righteous spirit. To attain the goal which the Sphinx represents is to undertake the journey of purification. To purify the human body from the negative desires and emotions which creates imbalance of the body leading to impurities. And since the ancient Egyptians were the founders of alchemy, which comes from the real name of Egypt, Kemet, meaning the black land, this leads us to understand that the symbolism of the Sphinx is linked to the spiritual purification of the body, which is the second stage in experimental alchemy that comes after Negrero. And as we know, to be a great alchemist, you need to work on both the physical and the spiritual. Following the chaos after the Negrero state, the alchemist undertakes a purification in albedo, which is literally referred to as ablutio, the washing away of impurities. This phase is concerned with bringing light and clarity to the prima materia, the first matter. It describes the decay of one's old self and the rebirth of one's true self. The first four stages involve discarding our old, inauthentic self and drawing together the authentic elements within us. Purification through the light of the sun that hit the Sphinx and projects a shadow, the shadow of the old soul merging with the shadow of the pyramid. Both shadows combine to symbolize the rebirth of the higher self, or in other words, the merge of the pharaoh from the pyramid shadow into the body of the lion that transcends over desires and transforms to the human divine self represented by the head of the pharaoh. Another proof of the Sphinx functioning as an alchemical symbol was presented by Egyptologist Mark Lehner, where he discovered that if you stand in the eastern niche during sunset at the March of September equinoxes, you see a dramatic astronomical event. The sun appears to sink into the shoulder of the Sphinx, and beyond that, into the south side of the Pyramid of Khafre on the horizon. At the very same moment, Lehner says, the shadow of the Sphinx and the shadow of the Pyramid, both symbols of the King, become merged silhouettes, producing a spiritual alchemical transformation of death and rebirth of the King. Lehner also discovered that when one stands near the Sphinx during the summer solstice, the sun appears to set midway between the silhouettes of the pyramids of Khafre and Khufu. The scenes resembles the hieroglyph Achet, which can be translated as horizon, but also symbolized the cycle of life and rebirth. Lehner added that if somehow this was intentional, it ranks as an example of architectural illusionism on a grand, maybe the grandest scale. This means that Egyptians were trying not only to create shapes, but also speak through them. As we know, their hieroglyphic system was based on artistic drawings, so their language is art, and that is how they were communicating at a macrocosmic level, using their grand scale art of monuments. A pyramid, a sphinx, and a temple. Collectively, Lehner describes the complex as a cosmic engine intended to harness the power of the sun and other gods 
to resurrect the soul of the Pharaoh. This transformation not only guaranteed eternal life for the dead ruler, but also sustained the universal natural order, including the passing of the seasons, the annual flooding of the Nile, and the daily lives of the people. In this sacred cycle of death and revival, the Sphinx may have stood for many things. As an image of Khafre, the dead king, as the sun god incarnated in the living ruler, as guardian of the underworld and the Giza tombs, and as an alchemical symbol of transformation from the lower self to the higher. To further understand the riddle, we need to know the significance of shadows in the ancient Egyptian religion. They considered it one of the main components of creation, with its companions the soul or ba, flesh, the body, the ka, life force, and the name. Also they believed that the soul or ba had its own separate spiritual shadow. Each night in the afterlife, the shadow returned to the mummy of the deceased, just as the ba did. The coffin texts tells us that my ba and my shadow going on their feet to the place where a man the deceased is. At times, however, the shadow is more closely related to the body than the ba, as reflected in both the coffin texts and pyramid texts that describes the deceased's consumption of the god's ba's while their shadows remain with their owners. Though the human ba was often depicted in funerary scenes, the shadow was represented only rarely. When it was, it most often took the form of a human silhouette, sometimes with an eye. It should be noted that the shadow was also recognized for objects other than human beings, such as the shade cast by trees and buildings. On the dream stella located between the paws of the Great Sphinx, it describes how the king Tutmos IV rested in the shadow of the Sphinx at noon and fell asleep, dreaming that the Sphinx appeared offering him the throne if he will only liberate the Sphinx from all the sand covering his body. And here a shadow can symbolize the arm of his god protecting him. Now after going deep into the darkest esoteric realms of the Sphinx, let's fly to the upper exoteric realms and decode the relation of this magnificent monument relative to the Celestials. In November 2000, in the newspaper De Volkskrant, Kate Spence of the Faculty of Oriental Studies of the University of Cambridge published an article describing how the Egyptians could determine the north accurately using the stars Mizar and Kochab and respectively the constellations Canis Major and Canis Minor. Using the program SkyMap Pro 7, she had calculated that in year 2467 BC, these two stars would point exactly north at the moment that they were standing vertically at the horizon. On the basis of the deviation which the pyramid have in comparison to the north, she could subsequently determine in which year the start of the building of the pyramids, which was 2467 BC. Moreover, according to researcher GMC Wegmans, he claimed that the Sphinx is in actuality the representation of the Lion constellation in the sky, and the Nile represents the Milky Way, he used a simpler technique as Kate Spencer's, but instead of using the two stars she used, his reference was Sirius and Procyon stars. This observation could have been used by the Egyptians to line up their pyramids exactly east. They only focused at Procyon and registered that point at the moment that Sirius appeared at the horizon. The result was slightly different, leading to 2448 BC as building period of the pyramids. However, his theory was rejected by Kate and other archaeologists and Egyptologists, since the ancient Egyptians did not use the same modern zodiac signs we use today, which I researched and found out that they did use different constellation shapes, as it was presented in the book History of Egypt by G. Maspero, written 1905. 
showing a picture of ancient Egyptian constellations where there's a lion with 18 stars around it. The body of the lion is sitting in the same posture as the sphinx facing east, but instead of a pharaoh's head, it had a lion's head. Yet the constellation did not represent the modern lion's constellation. I'll leave you all the links in the description box in case you wanted to check it yourself. As I mentioned before, the Egyptians think in terms of projecting heavens into earth, or in other words, projecting a righteous city that is a copy of the heavens, following the law as above, so below. They considered the heavens as spiritual and righteous place, and they were trying to attain the utopian idea on earth by building a city relative to the stars and celestial objects. However, that was not something unique to only the ancient Egyptians, as the Babylonians and the Canaanites used to follow same architectural idea, which is building monuments and temples relative to the motion of the stars. And if you go back to the episode I did about Isaac Newton, I mentioned that he had an obsession with Solomon's temple, and according to his journals, the temple was built in accordance to the positioning of the stars. Not only that, but also the Kaaba in Mecca has similar alignments with the celestial objects at certain periods of the year, like the alignment that happened in May 28, 2023 of last month, where the sun was clearly aligned with the Kaaba at noon. The ancient Egyptians believed in shadow and light as two opposing forces, yet complementary, as life and death coexist. In the light of life we wander and learn. In the darkness of death we rest then rise for the judgment of the test. And as the Sphinx guards the sun's realms of light, or in other words, the civilization of Egypt, with its beast appearance, a body of a lion to represent king's power and dominions, the head of a pharaoh to represent king's intellect, wisdom and divinity, both together will create an intellectual monster that not only bring terror to the hearts of the enemy, but also astonishment of perceiving the concept of a conscious divine beast that rose above earthly desires guarding the fields of light, and those fields can be perceived as the black divine lands of Egypt. That being said, clear as light. In the deep shadows of the night, the mystery is yet not too clear and bright. Not everything we see is quite right, yet we need to swim deep in the temples of our inner sights, and one day we will be victorious over the darkness of ignorance with our shining sword of knowledge and indestructible shield of wisdom. And the symphony of God continues in an approach to solve the mysteries of life. I am the Mystery Stutter, and you are listening to Mystifiers. Before I go, I want to give special thanks for everyone who reached this part of the podcast. Also, to make this video successful, I will need you to please like, share, and subscribe. And leave me a comment of what you think, or if you have any kind of theory about these things, just let me know. And if you leave me a great comment, I'll make sure to feature it in the next video. Also, in case you want to support me, I'll leave you links in the description box where you can donate to the podcast. Thank you so much.